The content property is an essential part of using pseudo elements, but most people don't really know its purpose or what you can actually do with it. So we're going to explore a few things you can do with it, like adding quotation marks, create some little cool icons, add a tooltip, and even add some custom counters, creating a whole bunch of really useful stuff without actually requiring any extra markup. So as we saw in the last video, if you're making a pseudo element with the before or after, you must use the content property or else, well, it defaults to none and then there's just no pseudo element created at all, so it's kind of useless. We also saw that you can write some stuff in there. So just as a quick uh, thing here, I have my intro up there. Um, so if I come to my intro and I do, and we do a intro before, I can say the content is hello. Whoops, it's a string, so it should be in quotation marks. Hello. And hello has gotten added in before my content. And I can't even select it. It's it's not selectable. It's it's a pseudo element. It's hanging out over there. Well, we can do a lot more with this content property. And one cool example with it is URL. And you can use this to insert images just like a background image. So uh, just as a quick example, and this isn't something that I'm going to explore too much, but I've seen some cool examples of it used uh, on splash it. We'll just do like 100 by 100 for a small little image, but it can bring in images. So if you had icons or uh, something that you'd want to bring in some specific places, you could bring those in like that. Uh, and of course, in the after as well, you could do the same thing and have things come in after and style them like we were looking a little bit with in the last video. Now, one thing that you can do that's really cool is open and close quotes. And I used to do this the hard way because you can, I know I could write in the, the quotation marks and you get the right one. You, this is really cool. So on my block quote here, I have a block quote. Um, so, you, you know, you have a testimonial or something like that. So on my block quote, um, we can go in on the before and the after. So let's bring that in block quote before. And on this, the content, we can just put in open quote. And look at that, it just shows up. That's so cool. <laughs> um, I love that open quote. And as you might be able to guess, I can also throw in an after on this. Uh, now you don't want open quote because it's gonna not look quite right, but we're gonna switch that over to close quote. And look at that, we have the opening and closing quotes. And if you wanted this to be a bit more interesting, obviously you could uh, play around with it a little bit. So the font size could be bigger. Uh, the color could be, you know, something that's a little more um, faded out. So it's a, more of a, like a little hidden thing or I could bring in my red color if I wanted to. Uh, color, whoops, color red and it will bring in my red color and I could change the positioning on all of this to get it to be exactly where I want it to be. But I just think just open quote, close quote, just like that, and it works. Super cool that uh, they make it so easy. And, uh, you know, I used to use this in another way that worked, but this is just so much easier. So I think that's cool. You can do uh, open or close quote just like that. Really neat. Um, now that's the simple ones. Now we can get into some more interesting stuff as well. Um, so we can create a nice little tooltip without any markup. So if I have a link or something that when I hover on top of, I want like little extra information to show up. Um, and so this is something where we will spend a little bit of time uh, styling and getting to look good. So the very first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come here on, let's add a new selector. And I don't want to select all of my A's. Um, what I've done here on this specific link is I've added a data tooltip. So you can do this, um, any, you know, these were added in as uh, attributes that we can sort of customize to create how we want, mostly used for JavaScript purposes. Um, but I'm going to use it for some CSS here. So I'm going to do a, but I'm going to add in a data tool tip. So that means an a that has a data tool tip on it. So uh, the or an a my, my anchor tag that has a data tool tip attribute on it, and I can give this some custom styling. So I'm for this I'm just going to give this a position relative, because I want to be able to absolutely position my pseudo element. So what we're going to do is take the same thing, but choose the after. It could be the before as well, however you uh, decide to style it, but I just think it makes more sense as an after for whatever reason. Um, and what I want to do here 
is a whole bunch of stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up that content property we're looking at and we can choose the attribute. So I can choose the attribute data tool tip. And you can see that a cool tool tip has just appeared here. So before that, if I take this off, you can see it just says dollar sit Emmet, some nice Latin right there. And when I bring that back in, the extra text, a cool tool tip gets added. And what that is, is it's taking my data tool tip attribute and it's putting its value, a cool tool tip into there. So that's the content is becoming whatever I have written inside of here. So that's really neat because right now it's kind of weird. We don't really, you know, there are times where maybe you'd want something like that, but we can get to styling it now. So if I give it a display of block instead and a position of absolute, so it comes out of the flow of everything else. And you can see now it's out of the flow. It's actually overlapping with my other one. So let's give this a background color. And I have some SAS variables set up. Um, so I'm just, it's a color that I have stored up. If you don't know too much about SAS variables, don't have to worry about it too much. It's just, I'm just putting a background color on here pretty much. Um, I can add a little bit of padding to this. So let's say, I don't know, 1M3M-ish, something like that, just to give it some size. So there we go, we can start seeing it. The color should probably be white. So we can read it a bit easier. Probably look better with a border, border radius. Uh, I don't know, five, 10 pixels ish, just to some round the corners a little bit. That looks a little bit nicer. And maybe the font size can be smaller font size. Um, I'm going to do like 0.75 M just to make it that much, you know, 75% pretty much of this font size. It's getting on the small side, but I think that's borderline readable. Maybe we'll go with 0.8 just to try and help out a little bit there. Um, now let's position it where we want it to be. So I'm thinking um, where let's go. Um, where do we want it? Bottom zero and uh, left zero. The left zero for sure. Um, oh, that's not looking so good. Um, so let's move this up a little bit. Bottom will be. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. So we want it to start like right above that. Um, left zero, it's doing left and right of zero. Um, we can give this, oh, we can stop it wrapping. Uh, if we do white space, no wrap, which is kind of cool. That should make it, there we go. That's better. Uh, so instead of wrapping down, it'll just take up whatever space it needs to. I think that, uh, help things out a little bit. Um, now what I want is I don't always want it to actually be there. I only want it to show up when my mouse is on top of it. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We could just like have the opacity turn on and off. Um, one thing I wanted to sort of like grow out of here. So let's do one thing. Let's do a transform scale. And we're just going to set the scale to zero. So it should just disappear. The scale is zero. So it doesn't really exist anymore. And then I want to take this and I want to add a hover on here. So when I hover on top of a data tooltip, the after, and it's important the hover goes in between the after and this, or it's not going to work. So it's when we're hovering on the data tooltip, the data tooltips after is going to change what it looks like. So now we can say the transform scale of one. So when I hover, it appears. So that's kind of cool, right? That's weird that it wasn't disappearing for so long. Something's going really slow here. We'll figure out what's causing that, but let's keep going because we obviously want this to transition. So transition, transform. Um, let's do it at like, I don't know, ease out. And we'll have it take 150 milliseconds, something fast. So it should grow and then shrink. That's oh, working better now too. So it's growing and shrinking. So that's kind of cool, except it's growing and shrinking from the wrong spot. I don't really like that it's growing from up there. I'd rather it look like it was starting here and then like taking off a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this bottom back to zero. So it's on top of my tooltip. So it's the, well, not my tooltip, but it's on top of the text that it's from. And then we can also do 
my uh, bottom becomes 100% like it was before. And that just means this transition, so we're going to have two transitions, so I'm going to put it on different lines here so we can see the two of them. You transform ease, uh, not transform, sorry, bottom ease out 150 milliseconds, so it takes the same amount of time. Uh, got a comma separate them though. So I mean this could all be written on one big line, it just makes it easier to read when it's not. So comma separated my two transitions and we can see it grows out of the text just like that. So that's kind of cool. So we go up and it's growing out of my text and we get a little tooltip. The tooltip is part of the link. So you can see when my mouse is on top of that, we can still click on the link itself, but because it's gone now and the scale is zero, I can't actually click on it now. It's only when it appears. So I think that's kind of neat and fun uh, and a cool way of using this attribute uh, content thing to do some fun stuff with it. Um, now we can also do things with uh, decorating sections. Um, so the counters we're going to get to in a minute, the counters are down there, but first we're going to do some decorations. Um, so let's just do dot decorations because I have a whole div here for it and let's add some padding because it's kind of tight. Just to, there we go. So we can sort of see where, where this section is all by itself and focus just on that. So inside this decorations, if we go and look down here, I have my decorations and then all my H2s have a class of section with deco on it. So what I can do here is let's go and grab my dot section sec section with deco. And let's do some stuff on here. Um, so one thing we can do just remember when we looked at the whole image thing. So just to give you an idea of if you had images, you could do something like this with content and use that URL thing and do on, I'm just going to use my on splash it again. But if you had sort of a saved, uh, image that you wanted to use or something, you could do this. Now when you first, whoops, this should be before and unsplash, this should be a dot. And there we go. Um, now obviously you wouldn't want something like that, but then if I do, you have to remember their display inline by default, so display block. And look at that, I can get these nice little second section separators or something if I had a, a nice icon or like an image that could separate uh, wherever I had my separations or something like that. Or another really cool way we can use it is with Font Awesome. Um, so I'm going to add the Font Awesome link. Um, so this time we're going to do a little caret is equal to, and we can do HTTP. So anything that starts with HTTP, and I'm not going to put the S and I'm not going to do anything else. So it's HTTP, it should pick up S or not S. And after, I'm just going to copy this, paste it in, but we're going to change the icon over here from uh, that one that we're using currently because it doesn't make sense to say that's a PDF. We're going to change this one over to F35D. Now it's not going to work. You can see that I'm getting a little icon there. And the reason for that is, uh, or not the right icon, and the reason for that is um, this is part of the pro. It's not one that is free, but if I change the font weight to 900, now it will work and I'll get a nice little external link icon. And there we go. So that looks nice. It's showing that it's an external link. Now I find that one's a little big, big personally. So font size, maybe like a point, 0.8m or something like that to shrink her down just a tiny bit and it's an external link so if I click that it will bring me to another website. Um, so yeah, a nice little addition that you can do. And so you can use the font awesome, just watch out for the whole font weight thing and again just check out the cheat sheet and uh, there, I'll put a link to the in the description for that. And now last but not least, the one that I think is the most fun and probably least known about or really understood is the adding in counters. Counters are really, really cool. I love how this works. Um, so basically you can just create, no, we have, we have numbered lists, right? You can just do an, an OL, an ordered list, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to work like an ordered list. Now, uh, the cool thing with this is you can do a lot of other cool stuff with it. Um, we can use the ordered lists we can pretty much turn anything into an ordered list, which is really cool. Um, so if we look here, um, I have my counters. So in my counters, let's go find counters. And then I have my H2 class of section. 
So in counters itself, in this whole div here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something called a counter reset. And let's with the way the counter reset is, is you need to give your counter a name. And why it's a counter reset is every time it gets to a class of counters, it will reset itself. So if I had five divs that had lists in it and I wanted to use it like this, I could have my list reset every time it comes into a new div with this name. So my counter reset. Um, and then you just put whatever counter name you want. This is your choice of counter name. So for this example, we'll just go with counter name. Why not? Uh, I can't think of anything better since <laughs> it's just a counter name. Um, so on my dot section, so my section, if you remember, is all my H2s. So all these section titles here are my dot section. So on my section before, what we're going to do is I'm going to do a few different things. We're going to do counter increment counter name. So what that means is every time, so we get into my counters div and it resets. So we're starting off, we're at zero. Then every time we get to a section, it's going to increment it. So one, two, three, four, five. Pretty much it just means every time you find a section before count, add, add one, add something to it, add one to our thing. So add an increment to our counter name. Then uh, for the content, content, all we do is put counter and then write the counter we want. So counter name once again. And we should see, there we go, some numbers pop up. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, and if you needed to, over here, you could come in and just add um, a space as well. So this is a string. So I'm just putting quotation marks around an empty space. It can't be together because then there's nothing in there. But I put the space there, so then it's numbering it and keeping them apart. Or we could even just you know, drop in a period or uh, something, you know, uh, whatever, whatever you need in there. And it will work nice and clean and look pretty good. So basic, it, it already looks good, but we can make this look a lot better. So I think we should go and do that. So let's take this off because I won't need it anymore. And I want to put these in a circle and position them where I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is say that once again, my section is position relative, like we did in uh, one of the previous ones. And now in here, we'll change this to position absolute. Uh, then we can also, with that, we can move it over on the left. So let's do like negative, I don't know, 2.5 M. There we go. So it's floating off in away from everything else. So that's a good start. Um, and with that, now let's see what else we can do to it. So let's give it a background, background white. Okay, let's give it some padding to give it some size. Uh, should I give it padding? Let's do give it some padding and see what happens. 1M. Let's just see what this looks like. That's a little too big, eh? 0.5M. And actually, no, the problem with these is it's not going to be a perfect square, and I want to make them into circles. So instead of that, I'm going to give them a width of, uh, I don't know, 2M height of 2M. And let's see what happens. There we go. So now we have perfect squares to work with. The only problem is the number's not right in the middle. So the easy way to do that is to make my before a display flex and then justify content center and align items center. And it should put that number bang in the middle. So you can see that just because we're working on a simple pseudo element, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So now I can do my border radius 50% because I mentioned I wanted to make it a circle. There we go. It's already looking pretty good. Um, I want to move it up a little bit because I'd like my number to still be lined up with my text. I don't know how much I need to move this up top. Um, whoa, I have no idea to be honest with you. Negative 1m is going to be too much. 0.5 is not enough probably. That looks pretty close. I'm going to leave it there. So uh, that looks pretty good. I think, should I change anything else? Um, let's give it a border. Border of, I don't know, two, three pixels, solid, clear, uh, color gray. There we go. That moved it down a smidgen, eh? Oh, that's, uh, what if I did uh, border um, box sizing border box? Would that fix that? 
Oh, it does. Good. So that means that the, the border's included in the width and the height, whereas before it wasn't. So it just keeps my alignment uh, a little bit more in check. Um, I'm also here with this just to change. I'm also going to change my color of the text to the same color as my border. I think it'll look a little bit nicer. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty nice. Um, so, you know, we can get our numbered list just like that. And you might be thinking, well, that's cool, but what about, you know, lit actual, I, I have an OL and I want to do the same thing. Well, you can do the same thing with actual lists as well. I won't style it as uh, intently, but if we look at, this is uh, my counters OL, uh, OL. So every time I get to a new ordered list inside of counters, I want to do a counter reset and we have to give it a name. This one should have a different name, right? Um, so let's give this one a name of uh, ordered list because that's what it is. Um, and now before we have one other thing we're going to have to do, but just to show you what it, why we need to do it, let's go to our li and before because we want to target our list items now. So the counter increment once again, ordered list. So we're every time we get on one of these list items, we're increasing the increment. Then what we want to do is we want to do content counter ordered list. And now what's going to happen is uh, do, do, do. And nothing showing up because this should be counters, not counter. Let's scroll back down. And now you can see it came up. So the problem now I have is I have 1.1, 2.2, uh, 3.3. So on here, I do want to do list style of none just to turn off the original ones. Now, my list isn't looking as good as it originally was. So when you first see this, you might be going like, oh my goodness, it's it's so much work to make a worse off list. Why would you do it? Well, first you could you know take the time to make a nice change of style for what your uh, numbers look like or something like that. Another thing you could do is you could change what's going on here. So on my content, I could have it say like uh, list item and then I'll add a space there. So it's list item space one and then I can come all the way over to here and then add another space inside of quotation marks. So list item one, list item. And then of course, you know, it, it could be um, the color of it is different or even, you know, maybe this would make more sense. We put the, that, so it's, oh, whoops, I put that in the wrong spot. List item, we do this here. So it's list item one, two, three. I don't know why you'd write list item like that, but then, or even, Say then you do font size, whoops, that's not in the right spot. Uh, my goodness, I'm all over the place here. Let's get that back into place. Font, font size is 0.8M, color is uh, color red, whatever you want. It just makes it easy to put whatever you want for your list. And then just to show you that how the counter does reset, um, here, if I take another OL, whoops, if I copy that and I paste it, um, you can see that the numbered list is, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as you'd expect with an OL. But what if I took this counter reset for ordered list and I just had it on my whole, whoops, well, just, where's my... If my whole counters, so this is the big div that they're inside, counters. If that was my reset, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's two different lists, but the lists keep counting because they're all part of the same big block. So maybe you have li separate lists that are separated by paragraphs, but you want the numbering to continue. You could definitely use this for something like that. Um, there's more stuff you can do with the content property too, but this is the big stuff that I think covers most of the bases. So I hope you like this. I hope you learned something watching this video and thought of some cool ways that you could use it in your videos. And of course, uh, if you have, please hit the thumbs up to let me know that you liked the video. If you don't be shy, if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons who helped make all of this possible. I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to be a patron as well, go and check out the link down below so you can figure out how to support this channel. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.